Summary of a Model of Christian Charity by John Winthrop Winthrop starts his lecture by making a point about how unequal the world is, God wanted the condition of mankind to be different, with some high and eminent in power and dignity and others low and in subjection. The lecture is about this basic society problem, which is why some people are rich and others are poor. It is at the beginning. In the next four or five parts, Winthrop talks about why God has allowed this difference and how people can deal with the pain it causes. Winthrop starts by giving several reasons why this difference exists. First, God put people in different jobs to show how many different kinds of skills he has. Second, social imbalance makes it possible for God's spirit to show up in many different ways. For example, the rich can be humbled while the poor can be given strength. Third, because everyone is different, this should help people realize how much they need each other, which will bind them closer together in the bond of brotherly love. Winthrop says that people should understand that ability, material wealth, and high status are not things that the people who have them actually own. Instead, these things are gifts from God. He talks about the two sources of moral behavior, justice and mercy. These are similar to the Bible's rules and the inner urges of one's mind. Winthrop talks about the duty of mercy between people in a community when he talks about the need for liberality, charitable giving. He says that people should always give what they can and sometimes even more. He warns against laying up, hoarding or storing one's wealth and resources, and reminds his listeners that our things are gifts from God and don't really belong to us. Winthrop then looks at why he lived such a kind and forgiving life. People act kind when they feel brotherly love, just like a clock strikes on its own after being turned. The idea of the human body also shows the bond of perfection that love represents between men. Different body parts work together in balance, just like different people do when they live in the same community. He also talks about the unity of humanity and how men are all the same. He ties this idea of unity to the power of social love to bring people together. From here, Winthrop gets into the details of this love feeling. He uses a famous Latin proverb and Bible stories to talk about how people are naturally drawn to each other. Winthrop says that this desire can make people put aside their natural greed. People are knit together by feelings like sympathy and sensitivity, which let them feel each other's pains and joys. This is a creative and self-affirming link in which one sees his own image and resemblance in another. Before moving on to his last part, Winthrop talks about romantic love in a roundabout way, implying that even marriage can't be as good as the exercise of mutual love. In the last part, this look at love is put into the setting of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Winthrop tells his Puritan residents that, even though they live across an ocean from each other, they are knit together by this bond of love even though they must also follow the rules of their country and their own moral sense, which Winthrop has just shown, he thinks that selfless and Christ-like behavior must come from within, not just be a rule. He says that the new settlement is an example of a Puritan utopia, and that it is different from any community in England. He tells his colonists about the moral pressures that come with this, including the wrath of God. In this work, the group will be knitted together as one man. He ends the lecture by saying that the colony will be a city upon the hill, which is a reference to Christ's lecture on the mount. This means that they will be spiritual leaders for the whole world. About he author. John Winthrop was born in Suffolk, England. He spent much of his life torn between his strong spiritual beliefs and his work as a lawyer and lord of the family home in Groton. Winthrop learned about religion at Trinity College in Cambridge, where his father worked as a supervisor. He knew a lot about religion even at a young age. But he never joined the established church. Instead, he liked the radical ideas of the Puritans. He married the first of his three wives when he was 18. Soon after, he had children. Winthrop, like all Christians who were against Catholicism, had a lot of doubts about Charles I's 1625-1649 anti-Reformation views. In 1628, the newly formed Massachusetts Bay Company chose Winthrop to lead a group of colonists to Massachusetts. In 1630, he led a convoy of more than 700 colonists. 
As an unauthorized lay preacher on the Arabella, he might have given his famous lecture, A Model of Christian Charity. Before he died in 1649, he was chosen governor of that colony 18 times because he was such a beloved leader. But he didn't become well known as a writer until after he died. During his time in Massachusetts, he kept a very detailed diary that was later released as a useful look into colonial America. His book A Model of Christian Charity came out after he died, more than 200 years later. Since then, it has become one of the most important papers in American history, and presidents from Kennedy to Reagan to Obama have used it as a source. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.